Time to start putting together the second parameter, the same design as version 3.3. I'm going to call this one version 3.4 because it's got a slight modification. I'm adding this charging circuit here, which um, that's the benefit of having a single cell because having a two cell pack is almost impossible to find a USB charging circuit for it. This one is a very easy to find version based on the TP4056 chip. This one was rated at 1 amp charging and this cell is a 550 milliamp hour cell so I modified it with a resistor changed the resistor here from a 1.2k to a 2.2k and that's dropped the charging current to 550 milliamps so exactly 1C which is perfect I've also checked the strain gauges with a temporary HX711 board just to make sure they're still functioning after I plaster them with this two part epoxy glue and a bit of foil I'm going to stick with the design having the HX711 board on the outside here because I like to keep this both next to the strain gauges and also away from things like the radio and the main uh, Arduino. These maybe uh, produce electrical noise which could cause um, interference. So I've been experimenting with a um, coating, a formal coating, this type here, which um, so far seems quite good. Sort of a flexible coating, you put it on reasonably thick. Here's an example here, I did a bit of a test one. Yeah, this seems okay, so I'm going to try that out um, as protection. So this circuit board is going to be added on to the power latch circuit, and that should line up quite nicely. Well, I honestly never designed my power latch circuit around these boards, but look how perfectly those line up. And so I can put them together with some header pins. Obviously that will have to be flipped around. But that will work perfectly, even a space in the middle there for the button wires to come out. I need to wire up the uh, switch again and um, also swap. Obviously this is being fed from V in, so that's going to be fed directly from the cell voltage instead. I'm going to feed that directly into the 5 volts. Yeah, so let's get to uh, wiring that all up. That's the wiring done. I've actually decided to use a different shaped cell. It's not like there's a shortage of those things available for free. And the light's gone blue, so it's now charged. I'm going to check the final charge voltage. Tape it up, put it together into the crank, and then it's time for calibration and testing. This is my slightly improved calibration method using this instead of a spring balance. Obviously a spring balance changes length with the load on it, so it changes the crank angle but to be honest from my experience you're never going to get a really good calibration using this sort of method for various reasons and um, it would obviously be helped a lot if I was to pull downwards to simulate pushing downwards at the 180 degrees to this and the reason for that is that it's to do with the way the chain interacts with the chain rings and which of these bolts will have stress on them and how that is transmitted through the metal here around the strain gauge area so you can't really calibrate it completely unless you take measurements at all angles also other factors like for example you should really be pulling at the center of the pedal there to simulate the push at the center because again that's twisting the crank so it gets you within like maybe five or ten percent and it'll never get you completely calibrated perfect parameter just from doing this. Here's some data from the first test ride and as I suspected it's not quite calibrated around 10 watts high and for the second ride around about 7 watts not too bad. I can tell it's a calibration problem because looking at the data here the error is proportional to the power so Higher the power, higher the error. You can see down here, when power is low, error is very small. And then as power spikes, 
very high, you get more of an error. Generally, very pleased with the data, it's pretty good. So I just fiddle around with the calibration a bit and it should be perfect. And here's something rather interesting potentially for the world of homemade parameters. This little board features the NRF52840 chip, but for some reason seems to be half the price of other equivalent boards like the Nano VLE and Adafruit Feather boards. And I thought, well, half the price, I couldn't resist buying one to try out. And so far, it seems to be just as capable. It, this one currently is running the Ant Plus parameter example. And I've programmed it by linking it up to the JLink programmer. And yeah, it seems just as capable. It's even got a single cell lithium charger on board and also a voltage divider and connection to an input pin so you can monitor the voltage. If you are going to connect up one of these programmers make sure you connect the V reference to the 3.3 volts here otherwise the programmer will not be recognized. Yeah that looks quite promising as a cheap alternative around £12 instead of £25 to £30, that seems like a pretty good deal.